Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Reed Rapid Melton and I do want to welcome you back to what promises to be one of, if not the greatest matchup of the night. As SK Telecom T1's Faker takes on the Jin Air Green Wings mid laner ganked by Mom. Faker, uh, coming off of a little bit of a rough spot in Champions over the course of the last uh, last series that they played versus CJ Entis. Promised to be one of the best of the year. Um, I remember the first time they played everybody, uh, the unanimous thought was that SKT were better, but uh, we'll see if that proves true. Here in game number one, Faker versus Ganked by Mom. Alright, no champion selection, no picks and bans. Uh, apparently, we're just getting right into it. So, uh, apologies for a little bit of confusion, but we're into game number one Faker versus Ganked by Mom. Ganked by Mom, of course, representing the Jin Air Green Wings. We'll see if he can fly his Glad plane in here. Maybe rain on Faker's SKT Telecom, or SK Telecom T1 Parade. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the votes. If you have ever voted against Ganked by Mom in a matchup, um, there's some questions to be had about that. But as far as Faker is concerned, it's really hard to vote against the, uh, the unkillable Demon King. <laughs> we'll see if he actually is unkillable. Uh, interestingly enough, not unkillable this tournament. Uh, I believe he had a uh, a loss to Samsung's AD Carry Wraith in their uh, their first round matchup in the group stages. So not impervious to uh, to drop in a game here or there. We'll have to keep an eye on that and let me see how things shape up. As far as the head to head goes for this specific matchup, Faker versus Ganked by Mom. As far as creep score goes, Ganked by Mom has played overall much longer games in lane. Uh, has a total of 317 minions killed over the course of his five games played in the group stages, whereas Faker with only 192 minions killed. Much less creep score, of course, that is because Faker kind of likes picking up first blood a little bit. Out of the four games that he won in the group stages, three of those were victories by first blood. Of course, one of those was a victory by tower kill. Now, kind of the mythos behind Faker here, specifically in this matchup, is that he has not lost a competitive game on LeBlanc. He has uh, got a big zero in that loss category. So it's going to be interesting watching him play here against Gank by Mom's Lulu, because while this isn't necessarily a 100% you know, serious 5v5, you know, for a trip to worlds kind of matchup on the line, it does represent a 1v1 versus one of what was at the time uh, a very up and coming mid laner. In OGN, and I think after sort of proving himself as one of the better mid laners in Korea, I kind of hit some ups and downs. And uh, specifically in this matchup right now, Ganked by Mom ooh, does actually block. With that help picks, uh, a lot of the damage that Faker is dishing out there with that level 2 combo. Sigil of uh, No Longer Silence, Sigil of Malice. I remember when they changed Sigil, Sigil of Silence to Sigil of Malice. I was like, nobody's ever going to play LeBlanc again. She's done. No longer uh, viable champion. Pick. And then, of course, you know, Faker's just killing everybody with her, and you kind of get the idea. Able to make some good stuff happen. Already almost out of mana. Should be seeing him use that mana potion here relatively soon. Of course, after he gets done with his crystalline flash charge. Drawing that minion wave away from his turret. He's actually taking a lot of hit points in damage. Uh, Faker trying to make them fight the jungle creeps. Nobody does save them from out of range of the turret. And that is the first trip back to base by Ganked by Mom. He'll teleport back into lane, but Faker saves every single one of the minions. He's like the Pied Piper of the Solo King. He's playing his magical flute. I guess he's not a flute-based champion, but you get the idea. Leading the band of his, uh, maybe he's like Robin Hood. He's leading his band of merry minions off through Sherwood Forest or the jungle. Does lose one CS under turret like that, but should be able to pick up the majority of these. He even gets that one. Now only down one CS versus ganked by Mom as the lane resets slightly on Faker's side of the lane. Perfect CS definitely possible and not missing the opportunity to both CS under turret and dish out some damage at the same time. Sacrifices one CS for the greater good of picking up the next two. 
And because this is a cannon minion wave coming into lane, that's a good time to go back because it'll take Gank by Mom maybe a little bit longer to kill it. Baker, trip back to lane. Actually picks up a, uh, I was about to call that a Mechie Pendant. Rest in peace, the season two itemization of my dreams. But, um, grabs a fairy charm, heads back into lane by walking into lane because, oh wait, the summoner spells. It's Flash Ignite for Faker versus Teleport Ignite by Ganked by Mom. And that's actually not quite as terrible an itemization as, or a uh, summoner spell choice as you would imagine because LeBlanc can actually get back to lane pretty quickly off of just using Distortion. Maybe once you're level 6, you will use the uh, Mimic Distortion. You just cover that ground. A little bit more quickly and get back into lane. It does mean that he did miss quite a few CS when he went back, but he should be able to deny just a couple of them as Ganked by Mom did not have teleport up on his return back to base. But GBM comes back with triple Doran's rings, whereas Faker is actually playing this like a regular competitive game. No Doran's rings aside from his first one. He's actually going to be building up <laughs> towards. Some more aggressive itemization, uh, you know, maybe going for that Morella Namacon, the dream. We've only seen one Morella Namacon ever completed in the Solo King tournament. Just because how often do you see third tier items that cost, like, I think it was like 28,000 gold, 2,800 gold. Going in on a GBM uh, does use the help picks to stop a little bit of that damage coming back his way, but Baker for now. Didn't even put that damage back out there, but oh, GBM popping those mirror images. Even hits Faker with a Glitter Lance through the minion wave, and Faker is in a bad way at this point. GBM much higher HP. He's got the minion wave pushing in his favor. He's up a couple of CS, and even just popping that health picks down on the Faker. Faker, keeping him honest. He's got health potions running, but he's down below 200 health points. His turret's down to half HP. He's using his skills to kill minions under turret, and honestly, he's going to miss most of those minions. Uh, hits one, misses two. Starting to take a little bit of a CS hit. GBM really playing this lane very, very aggressively and mostly we've already seen two failures on Lulu today. So Lulu not having a good day as far as the Solo King tournament's concerned. Faker actually giving up a CS just to make sure he hits that next one. Down three. The minion waves make their way back into lane. Now, GBM at this point, he's uh, up to CS, and Faker is going to have to play this lane. I, I don't want to say for keeps just yet. He does have that ignite, but so does GBM. And while Gank by Mom may not be able to flash away, he does have so many defensive options. And honestly, Lulu mid was initially popularized as a pick uh, away from that. S okay, chain does not land. Ethereal or otherwise uh, on the Gank by Mom. Lulu came into popularity as a mid lane champion in sort of what they call the League of Assassins. Not the, uh, not the Arrow League that is swallowing up everything Oliver Queen knows and loves, but uh, the, uh, the League of just nothing but Assassin players mid lane. Turns out when you run a champion with so many defensive options that it stops that... I'm not sure why Faker is backing right there. Maybe trying to make... Okay, missed GBM completely. Now Lulu gonna take a trip back to base. Oh, Chain does stop it though, so Faker being extra annoying. Trying to keep Lulu from backing as long as humanly possible. Double ults the wave. Hits the uh, last CS there. And actually takes a trip back to base. Not only denying CS under a turret, but somehow, almost magically, he's come out with a huge CS lead. And by huge, I mean about 5 CS, which is, you know, oh no, a big deal. But it's more importantly, it represents... Wait, what is Faker doing here? He's picking up triple Doran's ring and gets a little bit of CDR and mana regen. Off of what I can only assume to be a component of his, uh, his Morella and Amica. Now, the problem is that if Faker ever touches the summoning platform again, Gank by Mom is most likely going to have the ability to kill his turret. It's down below about 6-700 HP. And with as much AP as is starting to be stacked up there with those quad Doran's rings on Gank by Mom, those auto attacks are going to start to hurt. We're after the 8 minute mark, which means turret's actually... Whoa, double bouncing on him! Faker going to avoid that. Hits a chain off of it. Was that, was, that, was that a Mimic? Uh, Sigil of Malice. Another dodge there. Going to go back in. Force the ult out. Faker. What are you doing? Running circles around Gank by Mom. Of course, realizing that Lulu doesn't have a flash. 
and he's unable to dodge really anything that Faker throws his way. Maybe a Whimsy used defensively on himself, gives him the move speed to avoid a distortion, but man, Faker's just jumping everywhere. Coming back into lane with what is arguably going to be his strongest itemization this game. Coming out with not only a CS advantage, but also maybe a little bit of a sustain advantage. Keep in mind, Faker is the one with a crystalline flask, whereas Gank by Mom has bought nothing but consumables. So off of these repeated trips back to base, Faker has actually gotten himself a little bit of a uh, gold advantage. That's not actually illustrated in the gold advantage, just off of refilling that crystalline flask over and over again. Faker seriously just used his skills to one-shot the minion wave. And of course, you cannot actually kill jungle creeps. I thought he was actually going to get, like, you know, blue buff or something. You can't kill jungle creeps, although you can walk anywhere you want on the map as long as you don't kill anything in the jungle. Does Faker have enough gold for a fiendish codex? No, I, there's no way he'd have that much gold. He's just going to pick up health potions and run back into lane. He knew that he had enough of a minion uh, advantage, a CS uh, advantage, that he could head back to base, sacrifice, maybe a- wait, uh, did Faker just lo No, you're, you're kidding- wait, what? Um... Alright, well, that's ganked by Mom! Winning game number one versus Faker off of a turret kill! Faker, you gotta protect what's yours! You know, if you let something go and it comes back to you, then you know it was yours in the first place. But when you let go of your turret, you just win, or you just lose the game. Ganked by Mom, uh, that teleport spell really coming in handy. Got him back to lane consistently faster than Faker. And he took down game number one. So that'll be a game one victory for GBM. However, uh, this is not a situation that Faker is a stranger to. Uh, in his uh, best of three series versus, I believe it was the Samsung AD carry Wraith. Uh, Faker actually did drop game one in that series. Uh, I believe it was versus Wraith's Annie as uh, I think Faker was playing Cassiopeia versus Wraith's Annie. Or was it... Uh, and uh, it didn't... Let's just say it didn't go very well. It was actually Fury. I don't know why I said Wraith. Wraith being a support player. But it was actually Fury um, AD carry for Samsung. So not, uh, not a situation that Faker is, like I said, a stranger to. But he did follow up his group stage match by 2-0-ing Kane in the uh, the finals of Group B to advance here to the round of 12. But now, once again, he's going to have to come out back from a deficit. Faker loses this game, and he's out of the Solo King, a tournament that a lot of people saw the champions, saw the players, and were like, Faker, this tournament saw the players, and were like, Faker, this tournament's made for you. But now, going through a champion pick and ban phase, once again, if you notice Faker's bans, it is Garen, Galio, and Gangplank. Uh, these are the first three champions in the Korean League of Legends client. It would be similar to banning, like, uh, Ari and Akali and Anivia. Kind of the same idea. You just ban the first three champions because Faker doesn't care what you play against him. GBM's gonna make him pay, picking Kaylin. One of, if not the strongest 1v1 champion that we've seen so far in uh, the Solo King. So, definitely something to keep an eye on, Karthus? Alright. We'll see what happens here. It does look like it's locked in. Can't tell. Sometimes that shade changes a little bit. But it does look like Faker has locked in Karthus versus Jyn Ayers, ganked by Moms, Caitlyn. Now, uh, Caitlyn we've seen time and time again. I believe we've only seen one Karthus and it wound up losing. If I'm not mistaken, um, but Faker picking up Karthus here versus Gank by Mom. I don't, uh, I don't think you can get a much, many more options than you have on Kaylin. On uh, Kaylin, she's got such long auto attack range that if you want to win by CS, you can do it that way. If you want to win by just shoving the wave in and getting turret damage down, definitely a viable, uh, viable win condition. And of course, if you just want to kill the guy, headshots, and of course that same range and auto attack harass in lane is just going to be immense to deal with. So we'll actually have to take a look at the runes and masteries here in just a second and see what Faker's running as far as those are concerned. Now, uh, for Karthus, his passive is uh, maybe a little bit unhelpful because if you're using Death Defied, well, you can't defy death forever, and usually it means that you lost. And as far as Requiem's concerned as an ultimate, uh, a little bit less effective functions like an unblockable uh, Caitlyn headshot here. So kind of the same idea between ultimates, actually. 
uh, when it comes down to it. Nobody to block the ace in the hole on Faker, but of course Faker doesn't have to be in range of uh, GBM to, uh, to use Requiem. So we'll get a chance to see how that works out. I'm actually really excited. I hope they show us the runes and masteries. If not, I think we're actually going to take a uh, quick break to see how both of these players got to the round of 12 in the Solo King. Oh, 공격적이야. 김만수 씨 지금 많이 먹었거든요. 자, 그럼 약간... 뒤쪽으로 빠질 수밖에 없죠. 먼저 오대 수니까. 같은데? 여기서 보막 쓰고 마지막에 차. 아, 이거 아, 아니에요. 뱅 선수가 조금은 실수가 있었던 부분이 거리를 내준 것도 있었는데. 네, 눈치를 보고 들어올 수밖에 없는 거거든요. 이거는. 아, 이거 위험한데요. 출격전 들어가야죠. 이거 뱅 선수 이거 벽 넘을 수 있나요? 아, 이거 <웃음> 벽... 벽을 벽을. 아. 밀어내겠죠? 자 나오나요 한타? 보막 같이 보막 있는데 아 미니언 쪽으로 밀고 미니언이 아, 아 역시 좋습니다. 이거 깨질 수도 있다고 보이는데요? 자 CS 챙기고 네 이게 벽에다 이게 벽이 아니죠 네 포탑에다가 지금 내 네, 병사 스킬 쓰면은 네. 터져요 아, 이거는 와, 이거 빨리 와야 되는데 거든요. 자 벽이 끝날 수도 있겠는데요 갱만 선수 그렇죠 이게 진짜 무서운 아, 건데 둘셋네 경기가 이렇게 끝이 나게 되겠습니다. 근데 네, 지금까지는 잘해주고 있어요. 네. 어, 이거. 어? 아 이거 약간 예측을 한 건데 너무 멀리 봤죠? 네. 점화 걸고요. 자, 여기. 얼음 발키기 아. 썼고. 어. 점멸 썼는데 페이커 선수 한번 잘 잡았죠? 아. 자 그러면서 얼음 반편. 아, 아 그냥 경타로. 어때요? 아, 아, 아 됐고요. 야, 이거, 이거 근데 어그로가 저쪽으로 안 넘어가는 구도였죠. 네. 오, 오 이거, 이거. 야, 야. 아 이거는 아 야. 아. 아. 아 어려워요, 어려워요. 자 그러면서 자 이거 그러면 지금 가야죠. 맞았을 때 가긴 해야 되거든요. 네. 칼을 아, 뽑아야죠. 아, 그리고 점화, 점화, 킬, 점화, 킬, 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 킬. 아, 그러면 마지막 아직 한 발, 마지막 한 발. 피했습니다. 자 그러면서 오히려 오히려 자 공격을 해보는데 뒤쪽으로 살짝 뺐어요. 오 이거는 모르겠는데요. 자, 자, 아. 아, 끝나요. 이게 아직은 포탑 미는데 좋아서. 그렇습니다. 자, 6렙. 자, 테이컨 6렙 기다리고 있어요. 어, 티버. 자, 일단. 어, 스킬이 약간 미스 난것 같죠, 방금? 어, 티버. 티버. 티버 아파요. 티버. 티버 펀치. 티버. 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 자, 허리 때 돌리고 있는 상태거든요. 일단은 한번 중풀자를 까는데 생각을 해야 될것 같아요. 오, 설마 그냥? 티버 자, 뭐. 중풀자고 뭐 그냥 끝장을 어, 내겠다. 자, 여기서. 아, 중풀자는 아. 있는데. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Solo King, a Korean 1v1 tournament, of course, broadcast here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid, and I'm excited to bring you game number two between Gank by Mom, who's actually up one game to zero versus Faker in this best of three series. Now, Faker bringing out the Karthas, a champion we haven't really seen a lot here in the Solo King, primarily uh, just because there are so many other champions to go to. So when Faker picks it, you know he's got something good in mind. And the idea with Karthus here is that he's going to be able to probably just go for that CS win versus GBM. Uh, you're probably not looking for too many champion kills. Might be able to take down turrets if he can shove the wave quickly enough while GBM is back in base. But if you look at the summoner spells too, there's a big difference. It's teleport exhaust for Faker, whereas GBM is going for the teleport flash. That does mean if Faker is ever, you know, in a close range 1v1 kind of combat, not only does that mean that Caitlyn's going to deal less damage to him, less attack speed too, it means that it's easier to hit those Skittles when they land. So GBM starting out with a uh, four potion start along with the Crystalline Flask waiting in base for that extra 10 gold to pick up an extra potion, uh, whereas Faker just going straight up Doran's ring. Does not care about getting that Crystalline Flask value, he is just going to sit in lane 
see what he can get done. Now, waiting off to the side just to make sure he's not being flanked. Uh, I believe it was Zepha who actually came up with this really weird strategy where you, as an AD carry, you walk around the corner and get off several free auto attacks in lane just to sort of establish that lane dominance. But let's see what Faker has to say is Karthus versus Kaelin. Lane phase is underway. So in the early lane phase, there's probably not all that much this is going to be very impactful. Uh, GBM throws the minion wave both right outside his turret range and look at that damage back down on the Faker. Even hits him with that Pilter for Peacemaker too. But he's still keeping his CS up. So very, very well done there by Ganked by Mom. So talking to the, uh, the admins, you can see there's actually two champions in the game right now. Uh, Chuds and Shu. Uh, tweeted at Chudnator, who almost killed Faker after he won his 1v1 matchup. He teleported mid and tried to kill him immediately, but the game actually ended before he could do it. So this time around, Chuds told me that regardless of who wins, as soon as the game is over, he is teleporting mid and trying to kill Faker just so that he can like, you know, put that on plaque, put it up on his, uh, on his mantle or wherever you put plaques that you killed Faker. We'll see how successful he is, and of course, how successful Gank by Mom is. Uh, as he has shoved the wave now back into Faker's turret, it's gonna bounce himself off, and Faker actually able to hit uh, most of the CS, should be. And misses two of them, I believe, but has been able to kill every single other one. CSing under turret is Karthus, definitely something you need to put in your resume if you're gonna be playing the champion, because should be under there fairly often. Doing a little bit of a better job at dodging those built over peacemakers, but I mean GBM's just in full control of the lane. When you, why why you pick Ka uh, Karthus versus a Caitlyn when you're just going to be playing this very defensive matchup? Uh, it's not something that's going to go his way in the early game at least. But if there has ever been a uh, hashtag things Faker does, it has come back from situations you don't necessarily expect him to. But at least for the time being, he is down about five CS. He's going to be down some HP as well on his turret as that minion wave pushes in. Although, uh, not that big a CS differential. It's only 3 CS, so... Crisis averted, guys! It's only 3 CS. Lean phase continues. Some Caitlyn traps starting to be dropped out there. Exciting CSing. This is going to be one of the most action-packed matchups you've ever seen. It's not like it's LeBlanc versus LeBlanc or Lee Sin versus Lee Sin. It's... Caitlyn versus Karthus. I don't know if you guys uh, saw on uh, Steam Sale, Farm Simulator 2015. We get a little bit of a preview. This is this is them playing the demo of that game uh, right here. It's, uh, I would be very surprised if this ends in anything other than a CS war. Maybe turret kill if uh, Gank My Mom can put enough pressure on a Faker, but uh, something tells me Faker's going to be struggling just a little bit. Actually, not letting that wave hit his turret. Doing a good job at CSing it away from there. Has put three points into Q and then one into everything else. So, has put a point into Wall of Pain, which is kind of interesting. Uh, considering that that skill won't be actually very useful until he's either looking to kill Gank by Mom by slowing him out and reducing his magic resistance. Might be using it defensively too if uh, GBM decides to position a little bit too aggressively in lane. Look at those cues. Every single one of them hitting on to GBM when they're meant to. Let's see if he can hit this one. Oh, actually misses one. Probably could have hit all three, but he's going to go with a sure thing. And where's that Pilt over Peacemaker to stop him from going back to base? And there it goes. Not actually all that sure Karthus was going back, but you know, Faker, he's in there. Uh, won't be able to CS all of these with cues just because he is actually out of mana at this point, so as much of that back as he can but yeah completely dry in the mana department takes a trip back to base a full uh, what is that eight cs behind ganked by mom that is almost the 10 cs differential that you need to win the game and in case you guys are just tuning in how do you win a 1v1 you either take the guy's turret kill him or kill 100 cs with a 10 cs advantage over your lane opponent immediate ace in the hole as soon as Faker gets back to lane, I want to see Faker like back off and use Requiem just to uh, kind of send the same message. 
However, there is a somewhat longer cooldown on Requiem. And Ace Mo oh man, there's the Wall of Pain. GBM doesn't actually run into it. And of course, uh, Faker avoiding those Yordle Snap Traps as they get placed in lane as well. Now, the biggest problem for Faker to watch out now is probably just builds over Peace Faker is hitting him. And, of course, keeping up that CS. It's four Doran's Rings versus three Doran's Blades. Which Doran's will I take? It's uh, one more, but uh, at the same time, a little bit less sustained there. Faker stepping on one of those Yordle Snap Traps. Not necessarily uh, you know, the best option. There, there is the Requiem. <laughs> Just gonna use that like the uh, like the filter or like the uh, Ace in the Hole. Get down some free damage. He's actually placing those cues a little bit behind there. Tries to predict the uh, 90 caliber net backwards, but does not quite have that down. Now for Lay Waste, the double damage is actually going to be fairly accessible for Faker if he wants to go for putting that on to gank by Mom. With pushing up this wave, yeah, he's going to miss one, and oh, this might actually be some serious damage. GBM walking forward, but walking right into these Qs. Faker, how well can he predict them? Not well enough, and he'll take that Caitlyn combo back towards her turret. GBM's out successfully, but Faker down to uh, about to his last 400 HP. Of course, keep in mind the difference in Doran's items offensively is actually the uh, the difference in sustain. GBM has that Crystalline Flask instead. Faker pushed all the way back. Whoa, there's the... Wait, wh wh what? <laughs> GBM just flashed towards his turret to stop Faker from going back. I think he's trying to say, look, I'm going to get such a huge CS advantage off of you going back to base. With Teleport down specifically, that's the big deal. Faker is actually going to have to walk all the way back to the lane. And I think Ganked by Mom is actually going to win this. He's up a total of 16 CS. Faker's losing minions to his turret. And unless he actually kills GBM when he comes back to lane, Slow and Steady wins the race. And oh, a pickaxe. Actually, the buy there for, for uh, ganked by Mom. No more Doran's items for him. Wants to be slot effective and uh, just grab some extra AD. 25 picked up in that pickaxe. And uh, Faker, he's trying to shove this wave as quickly as he can. No TP for GBM either. So now this is Faker's turn to deny some CS. But have to deny several waves to get himself back in that CS game. Now he's only down about 8 at this point, so he won't lose necessarily if we hit the 100-100 mark. Only 10 away, but look at those Skittles! Death, or Lay Waste underneath turret. Hitting a few of those on a GBM. Every CS matters, narrowly uh, sort of balancing on that 10 CS advantage. Pushing forward, play ways. There's Wall of Pain, 9 caliber net through it. Should be able to hit every single one of these. And by placing that lay waste right on the tower, it's really difficult for GBM to try to kite around the turret and still avoid those. Whoa, Baker, hitting a couple of those. Needs to make sure to keep the CS up. Otherwise, it's two CS. And GBM wins the game. So there is the exhaust. Immediate 90 caliber back towards the turret. Faker trying to hit it. And there's the 10 CS advantage. Gen Air Green Wings flying the glad plane today as ganked by Mom takes a 2 0 victory over Faker and eliminates him from the Solo King. GBM, uh, somewhat anticlimactically, but just perfect lane management. Flash teleport, good summoner spells for just playing passively, keeping it safe, and while no, he didn't necessarily 1v1 Faker and win him in that way, but he did pick up the win nonetheless. CS is it's a viable win opportunity, and uh, it's the one that GBM's going to take 2-0 into advance. To the round of six. We'll have that match coming up, those matches rather, coming up tomorrow.
But as far as this matchup, it is going to do it 2-0 victory. Of course, coming up next, it'll be Bengi trying to get revenge for Faker's untimely demise. OQ. All-star AD carry of Najin EM Fire will be there to try to stop him. We'll have that matchup coming up as the Solo King continues here on Azubu TV. Welcome to another day of the League of Legends Top Bills. This is day 348. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's